Check this out. This is the Larva X by Happy Model. It's a little two cell or three cell micro FPV racer drone. And this is kind of like a toothpick variant. You may have seen toothpicks have been uh, gaining popularity recently because they're so small. This is only 50 grams uh, without the battery. With the battery, I think it's a little, let's see, 77 grams, not bad at all. And because he's quiet and he's fast and he's small, you can have a really fun time with something like this, like a toothpick variant of an FPV micro quad in a lot of places where you couldn't with a full size quad. So we're talking five inches, six inch quad. They're loud, they could be obnoxious, people think they're dangerous. This little guy is like a mosquito zipping around and people just won't care as much. So if you've been eyeing that park down the street, but you keep getting kicked out by people, maybe this guy is your answer. Uh, please fly responsibly. Now this is the Free Sky version. Uh, this is the Crazy B F4 Pro version three flight controller down there. 1103 7000 kV motors. Um, replacing them is gonna be about nine bucks each and I'll tell you more about why I know that. The frame is 100 millimeters and it's about $97.90 right now on banggood.com. Banggood.com supplied this for me to review, so thank you very much. And it's got a Runcam Nano 2 camera right there. It can also do up to 200 milliwatts uh, VTX transmission, plus it has onboard DVR recording. Yes, that is a micro SD card slot. Um, now, right now, I'm using a micro SD card, a SanDisk Extreme 30, 32 gigabyte. Make sure you're using 32 or under. A 64 gigabyte may not work. Also, make sure this is formatted before you plop it in there. The Happy Model website has firmware downloads for this. Uh, you can load it onto that SD card and then plop it in and it will update your firmware for your VTX and your recording software. So the Runcam Nano 2, whatever quality you can squeeze out from that is what you're seeing on your SD card. So basically it's like your FPV feed Maybe a little bit clearer, minus any you know analog interference or snow or anything like that. So it's just a crystal clear feed, but it's still kind of standard definition video. And even though it's 16 by nine when you get it on your computer, it's really stretched four by three because that's a four by three camera. So if you want it to look normal with normal proportions, you would kind of squeeze that 16 by nine down to a four by three aspect ratio on Premiere or your video editing software, and then the video would look normal. Everything is compact. Um, I like the X-T30, so you can plug in your three cell battery. Does not come with a battery, but I'm using a um, 350 milliamp hour battery here, high volt. And we just slip it right, I guess this way, and strap it down and then plug her in and then get your balance lead and snug it up underneath somewhere. I like it uh, for the most part. I like the idea. You know, I like what it does. Um, I like what it's designed to do. Fly a capable, fast, maneuverable micro quad in areas where you've gotta be on the DL or maybe you're just not trying to be obnoxious to people or you just prefer a small quad like this. The downsides are there are some things that don't work so great about it. Now the F4 Pro version three flight controller is great. So far, you know, I mean, it's, it hasn't burnt out like the other versions have with the 5 volt regulator, like we had problems with on the trash can. However, the Free Sky receiver that it comes with is just not a good, it's not good. It just isn't. Now, I, I wonder if it's because of the carbon fiber. I have a video coming out about the Cinecan, which has no carbon fiber to speak of. Same flight controller, same receiver, much better uh, Free Sky transmission. However, with this one, maybe it is the, um, the carbon fiber that's kind of surrounding part of the antenna here and the battery that kind of snuggles up right against it means that you're gonna have fail safes really close. And I was having them. I had two fail safes the other day when I shouldn't have had any. Uh, one when I was flying around me, behind me, not that far away. Woo! Uh, oh look, I just had a fail safe right there, wherever it was. Right behind me, my gosh. And another when I was flying in front of me, uh, and not even probably more than 200 feet away. I go barely on the other side of these, like next to the trees, and I'm like a 38, 37 RSSI. Yeah. Well, That's so not cool. great. I'm gonna put crossfire on this thing. Oh shit, yeah. I forgot. Getting our mortal T on here. Oh, there it is. Damn. What happened? Lost, uh, lost signal. I'm right on the other side of these trees. Now that caused me to severely bend two of these motors. 
They still fly, but if you see any jello in the image, that might be from these. So that's disappointing. I do have some more motors on order, uh, and that's why I know they're like nine or $10. Now right here, it comes with a little sticky tape on this uh, little foam. I have not taken the tape off. I didn't even really need to. So far I've crashed and the battery has not shifted. But if you find your battery is shifting, because shift happens, uh, then you can always take off this red tape and it's gonna snug it in and stick it in a little bit tighter. I like the video and I love the maneuverability. I felt like the only thing that was limiting me at that point was my reflexes, because anything I told the quad to do, except for the few times it fail safe, uh, it was doing. It like it would turn on a dime. It would accelerate so fast. Uh, it's just, it's a pleasure to fly when it's working. <laughs> Now, what I wanna do, and I wanna get this video out first with the FreeSky version because this is the version they gave me. This is probably the most popular version considering FreeSky, or Free, yeah, FreeSky is more um, popular than, than Crossfire. I'm gonna find a way, and I'm gonna sacrifice a few grams to do it. I'm gonna put this Crossfire Nano receiver along with an Immortal T, or maybe something similar, and um, get Crossfire on this thing because that's the only limiting factor. Uh, even if the Cinecan had the same range, this guy is twice as fast, three times as maneuverable, and just so freaking fun that you want to go far. You're supposed to go far, it feels like. This guy's got the ducks, you know, like he's, he's got covered props, you know, so you're not going to be hitting things. This is like for inside, flying around people. This guy is if you really want to go balls to the wall with a micro quad. And so to have a receiver that can't match that experience and is the really the only thing hindering this from being a good quad as is means that yeah forget free sky crossfire all the way now if you're not set up for crossfire on your radio you could go the xm plus route this is a free sky xm plus on a vifly x150 here and it's a prime example of something you could do and still get better reception than the little uh, f4 version 3 crazy b built-in receiver now, even though it doesn't come with a battery, it does come with a few extras, like an extra canopy. And this one is kind of uh, see-through. It's not quite as opaque as that one. And then also, obviously, some extra props and some tools. Um, but otherwise, pretty simple. You basically just get the drone. Like I said, just get some batteries, some three-cell. You're gonna have the most fun with three-cell. I've also flown some two-cell, I'll show you. The other day, I put in some packs using these uh, Race Day Quad 300 milliamp hour two-cell batteries. And it was actually pretty fun. I had a good time. The only thing is your throttle value is going to be way higher because three cell obviously has more power. So if you want to get the best experience out of this Larva X, get yourself a three cell, uh, maybe 300 or 350, maybe even 400 milliamp hour could fit. And uh, yeah, keep this under 100 grams and you can have a great time without bothering people or freaking people out. Now the bind button under here is a little bit of a pain to get to. You've got to take off the VTX and the camera and all that stuff, the housing. Uh, bypass all that. The instructions will give you some information on how to enter the binding mode through CLI, through your USB connection, right? Where's the, oh, underneath here. Yeah, that's right. I currently fly the Larva X with the Tyrannus X90 Plus and the Fat Shark HD3 goggles. Check the links in the description below to the goggles and the radios that I use to fly these. So I'm looking forward to putting this through more of its paces after I wire Crossfire into this. Totally doing that first. Then it's off to the races and <laughs> uh, we'll just see where all I can fly this bad boy. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Check the banggood.com link to the Larva X. They've been really good to me about supplying things to review and I hope uh, to review some more things in the future, including this guy, the Cinecan. He's up next. Stay tuned.